Well, hello there. It's been a long time. This video will be a bit different, but kind of the same. We will actually talk about this. This is my fermentation chamber for a beer that I'm brewing. So around six years ago, a friend of mine, Alan, cheers Alan, introduced me to craft beer. So I'm one of those. By the way, sorry for the noise. If you might hear something in the background, it's the neighbors trying to demolish their apartments. Stop. Three years ago, I started to brew my own beer and I was looking like everybody else on YouTube for tutorials. And many people were using uh, this kind of uh, mini fridges as their fermentation chambers. I basically stole their ideas and added some improvements, I think, of mine. So this video is not a tutorial, but uh, maybe can serve you as an inspiration. Uh, I use those videos as well as an inspiration for this. And I will show you what I did different. Maybe it can help you. If it does, leave a like. Oh, by the way, next video will be about this thing, which is a kegerator that I made and it's uh, like the best one on the market. You cannot even buy something like this. So subscribe for that. So I had a few criteria about the fridge. First of all, here we are in my living room. So the fridge had to be small. It's already occupying uh, a lot of space. It's one of those under the bar fridges, 85 centimeters tall, I think. One thing you might have noticed is the temperature controller, which is the famous STC 1000. This does uh, cooling and heating. I wired it directly to the power of the fridge and then uh, routed the cables through the lid. So I just open this lid and put the cables inside and they go right in the back. So what's inside? Well, it's just like uh, your normal fridge, except this one doesn't have a freezer. And this is the most important criteria. My beer is actually fermenting quite nicely now. I wanted a um, fridge with the cooling right in the back. As you can see, the 30 liter bucket fits perfectly here with space on the side. Of course, I had to remove the shelves that were here because they were interfering with the bucket on the top. So when choosing this fridge, what was important for me was to keep it looking like a mini fridge. Most of them have an extension here right on the door, like from wood or from something else. In my opinion, they look horrible. How to keep mine looking like a fridge. And in order to achieve this goal, it was very important to get a fridge without a freezer. I got this one for 100 euros, I think, which is a lot. It's expensive for a used mini fridge, but it was the only one that fitted my criteria. The keen eyed amongst you might have noticed that this is a, a weird bucket with uh, some uh, very specific accessories, and this is what it differs from most of the builds on uh, YouTube. This bucket was uh, made with Bolak connectors, which you normally find in a keg, in a soda keg. This is a beer Bolak connector and that one is for the gas. Why do I choose this? First of all, on the top I had some height issues with the normal uh, airlock, which I could not fit there without hitting the top of the fridge. And also, most importantly, I wanted to make uh, oxygen free beer transfer from this fermenter to my kegs which are behind me and here if you can have a look next to the gas line which takes the CO2 and it bubbles here in this uh, disinfectant solution there is another uh, basically port that's a thermal well and inside it it's a wire that actually has the temperature probe of this temperature controller. I have another lid here because I have a lot of these buckets so I will just show you more in detail. So this is just a normal gas post which I screwed inside here and this is a stainless steel thermal well. Basically it's a pipe welded at one end and you put your temperature sensor here and this way you can get an accurate reading somewhere in the center of the beer instead of gluing your thermal well on the side somewhere around here. That works perfectly. I can get, like you see, a reading right in the center of the beer. 20.3, it's actually a great temperature to ferment this uh, verdant yeast. Another thing you might have noticed, it's that we have a power cable here. And uh, to the power cable, it's actually connected right in the back 
a heating mat. It's one of these used for aquarium or terrarium actually and for plants you, when you put the pots on them in the winter. And this is a great choice. First of all, it provides a smooth warmth, you know. It's not getting hot. I was using before this. This is a heating belt. These are horrible. Never use this. First of all, they get very hot and it's getting hot only in this portion. And actually it will start to melt the bucket. And uh, you imagine the beer will be very hot in one spot and very cold in another. Here in the south of France, it's not getting very cold, it's not getting that hot either. So I'm barely using that mat there in the back anyway. And that's a white mat and it provides constant and like a warmth around the entire back of the bucket. Because it's not glued to the bucket or like stuck to the bucket, basically creates warmth all inside of this uh, refrigerator, which is very well isolated, you know. Another benefit of this um, fridge that I'm using now is that it has still usable storage here on the bottom. I actually used to have a lot of uh, things here, but now I'm only keeping my uh, counter pressure bottle filler. By the way, I'm using uh, these duo tight connectors everywhere in the system, in the kegerator as well, so stay tuned for that video. Also here I have a high uh, pressure CO2 bottle filler. I have some extension leads for when I am doing the beer transfer from the fermenter to the keg. This is for gas and this other line is for beer. The lower drawer on the door has storage as well and here we have all my spare bola connectors and like probably maybe like 200 uh, dollars euros worth of accessories here which I don't know why I even bought so many. And thermometers and some pH paper and also my uh, disinfectant solution. So this is how one of those uh, buckets looks inside. Basically you have just a hole from the beer ball lock. It goes inside, you have a pipe. And it's good because you have some height here. It's not right on the bottom. so. If you have the yeast cake here and some hops, they will be below the intake of this pipe. So when you connect the ball lock, you'll just have basically a pipe here. So if you noticed something uh, interesting, the door of the fridge was uh, open for the duration of this entire video, but the temperature of the beer barely changed from 20.3 Actually, it's now changing to 20.4. Uh, this is very important to get good beer. It's to get an accurate temperature of the fermentation. And this is why this temperature sensor right in the middle of the beer is important. Because you are getting an accurate temperature from inside the beer. And not from somewhere outside the beer, like if you tape the sensor on this inside. And now it's actually started and so I will actually close it to properly cool my beer. Now let's talk about uh, money, how much this costs. The fridge was 100 euros, but uh, that's because I wanted a very particular type of fridge with no freezer and uh, with the specific internal dimensions. I'm sure in the US you can find fridges much much cheaper than uh, here in France. Also I was very picky with this type of fridge and I wanted to be basically brand new, to not have scratches, not have anything. If you put your fridge somewhere in a garage you can buy maybe with 50 dollars or something which looks a bit worse but uh, it does the job and you don't have to cut it up. Well the temperature controller was uh, around uh, 10 euros. What I suggest you buy these uh, temperature controllers from Amazon or from a place uh, where you can easily return them. I will put the uh, links in the description of this video and also in the pinned comment with those that I use. There will be affiliate links so a small percentage will go to, to me to have a beer so thank you for that if you click on them. And also the heating mat which is inside here was around $10. Another thing I bought was three of these buckets and these are food grade uh, buckets. In France they are kind of expensive but in the US you can go to Walmart and buy a $5 bucket. The Bollock connectors that I used these were actually more expensive than the buckets and also the thermal wheel. 
this one I suggest you also buy them from a reputable source. I bought everything from the Kegland store, but uh, the disadvantage, at least in Europe, is that it takes two months to get them. So I suggest you buy these from Amazon as well, or if you find a reputable seller on eBay as well. The same with the thermal wells. Don't buy two longer ones, just buy shorter ones to get right in the middle of the beer. They should not touch the bottom of the bucket, they should come in the middle somewhere. The reason why uh, my thermal is on the side and not in the center is because this bucket already came with a hole here for an uh, airlock. So for three fermenters like this, the buckets with the bollocks, the bollocks? No. Oh. With ball locks and the thermal wells, you can uh, spend, let's say, maximum 20 25 dollars. If you get a 50 dollar fridge, that's 75 dollars. So, if you compare this with what's commercially available from uh, suppliers or from uh, brew shops, this is a no brainer because two or three times less the price for the same features. Let me know in the comments if you have questions about this, I will uh, answer in my ability. Uh, I think I have a pretty good uh, experience with these systems. I've been using them for almost two years now. First of all, my beer is consistent now and I can make the same recipe as many times as I want. I keep the same conditions for fermenting and for conditioning in this kegerator. So let me know in the comments if you liked this video and uh, share it with your friends if you did. I really enjoy this craft beer community here on YouTube. Uh, I've been following for years and years and I'm watching a lot of the craft beer channel in UK and uh, Homebrew for Life. Mandatory beer chug, also Cloudhammer Supply. Great editing by the way. If you have any questions let me know in the comments and uh, see you next time with a video about this kegerator. Peace. I'm on a beer now.